created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look Long ago and far away in the city of Jerusalem, a very special visitor came to town. His name was Jesus. He arrived on a beautiful Sunday in spring. What's happening? Where's everyone going? Haven't you heard? It's him! He's here! He's finally here! Oh! Who's here? The king! Come on! The king? Come on, let's go! There he is! There's Jesus! Where? Not that fellow on the donkey colt. The king? On a donkey? He should be riding a golden chariot pulled by mighty horses. Are you sure he's a king? He looks so ordinary, like one of us. He may not look special, but did you hear what he's done? He's done the most amazing things to help people. Even when Jesus is very busy, he takes time to bless children. There was a beggar who had been blind all his life. Jesus touched him, and you know what happened? The blind man could see. And that's not all. I heard Jesus went to a wedding, and there wasn't enough wine. So he took barrels of water and turned them into wine. Water into wine? That's nothing. I heard he knows how to walk on water. Oh, he's such a wonderful man. Nice man. Make way! Make way! Come on, donkey. There's a good donkey. Come on. thinking, Andrew. Which way do you want to go, Jesus? Let's go to the temple. I'm excited to get back to my father's house of prayer. To the temple! Come on! This way! <sighs> it's been a busy morning. The temple will be quiet and peaceful. No, it's okay. It's okay. The people don't care. You can bring the donkey in the temple with you. <coughs> ah! You said this was a place of worship. Well, the more money you spend, the better the blessing. It should be a house of prayer to honor God, not to make money. But look, it's like an animal farm in here. This bird is 12 drachmas. 12 drachmas. Oh, that's much too high. Look at that. Oh. Leave here, all of you. Now. Come, let's go. 
Not everyone was happy to see Jesus. Some priests in the temple were very jealous that everyone liked Jesus more than they liked them. They didn't believe that he was the king. You're always telling us about this wonderful place called heaven. But how do we get into heaven? Trust in God and trust in me. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive people when they do wrong. If people are hungry, feed them. And if they are thirsty, give them something to drink. If someone needs help... Will you people please stop pushing? We all want to hear what Jesus has to say. It's all right, Peter. Someone touched me. Who was it? There are so many people here. How could I know? Who was it? Who touched me? I did. I have been sick for many years. I wanted to touch you and be healed. Now you are better and can go in peace. Oh, thank you. From watching what I do and listening to what I say, you can learn how to enter into heaven. Love everyone, rich or poor. Most of all, I want you to learn to love your enemies. Hmm. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, was confused. He had followed Jesus for a long time, but he still didn't understand how to love everyone. He was also confused because he liked having money, and he always wanted more. I know I dropped it here somewhere. Excuse me, I've lost some money. Have you seen my coin? Does it have your name on it? One day, Judas decided to do something bad. Do you want to know where you can find Jesus? Yes. Who are you? I'm one of his disciples, Judas. I can show you where he stays for a price. Yes, take us to him. He's causing us too much trouble. The people like him more than us now. We must stop him. What will you give me if I tell you where he is? How's this? 30 pieces of silver. Don't worry. No one will know what you've done. All right. It's a deal. I'll come back soon and lead you to Jesus. That night, Jesus invited his closest followers, the disciples, to a special dinner. Hello, welcome, Peter and Andrew, and you too, James, John, Philip and Bartholomew. Hello, Thomas, Matthew, and James. Nice to see you, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. Ah, <sighs> what a long, hot day. I'm tired. Oh, me too. And my feet are filthy from those dirty streets. <sighs> I could sure use a bath. I know. Let's get a servant to wash our feet for us. Good idea. Jesus, do you know of a servant who can take care of us? Certainly. <gasps> hey, what are you doing? I'm washing your feet. Lift, please. But, but I didn't want you to do that. I wanted a servant to do it. You're too important, too powerful to kneel before me and wash my feet. Please, Peter, it's okay. I want to do this. And me too? And you, John. May I? And so Jesus himself, their Lord and teacher, went around the table with a large bowl of water. He washed everyone's feet until they were all clean. Even though I'm your Lord, I'm also your servant. I want to take care of you. And I want you to take care of others, too. Hmm. Now listen to me. 
I have something very important to tell you tonight. Someone here is going to do something bad to me. Someone is going to betray my trust and love. Who? Who is it? Could it be me? Or me? Go ahead, Judas. Do what you are going to do. First, I will give thanks. We thank you, God our Father, because you give us bread to eat and wine to drink. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this wine, I want you to remember me. The disciples didn't understand yet what Jesus was saying or why Judas had run off. They were confused, but they continued to listen. This is the last supper I'm going to have with you. I have to go away soon, but don't worry. We'll see each other again, I promise. And I want you to remember, always love one another as I love you. But we don't want you to go away. We want you to stay with us, always. Do you really have to go? Yes, but remember what I tell you. I'll be back. Soon we'll be together again. Is someone trying to hurt you? If so, we'll help you, won't we? My dear friends, tonight you will be afraid, but everything will be all right. But now I want to go outside and pray. Do any of you want to join me? I do. Me too. You can sure, count on I'll me, go. Jesus. Me yeah, too. Me too. I'll go I'll with you. Right by your I'll side. I'll go too. All right, then follow me. And so Jesus led 11 of his disciples outside. It was a beautiful starry night. They walked and walked until they got to a hill called the Mount of Olives. It was late and the disciples were getting tired. I want to be alone for a few minutes. You'll wait here for me and keep watch, won't you? Of course we will. We'll be right here if you need us. <sighs> That's right, you can count on us. I'm tired. Mm, me too. I know. Let's rest against these rocks and this tree. Dear Father, I know you love me and are watching over me, but sometimes I'm still afraid of what's going to happen. Please help me be strong to do what you want me to do. Thank you. Amen. But back in the city of Jerusalem... Which way is he? <laughs> Follow me. Peter? John? Where is everyone? <laughs> Sound asleep. Oh, it's you! Oh, where am I? What's going on? It's okay. It's time to wake up. Huh? What's going on? Hello, Jesus. Oh! oh. oh. <gasps> Come on! We have to protect him! It's okay. I must go. Put down your sword. This is what God wants me to do. <laughs> Following the orders of Pontius Pilate, the soldiers who carried Jesus away treated him as though he had broken the law. 
This was because there were some people who did not believe he was the Son of God. And so it was that Jesus died on a cross with a thief on each side of him. The disciples were very, very sad. They missed their Lord. But soon, a great surprise would happen. Some of the disciples took Jesus' body and cared for it. They brought him to a cave to be buried, as was the custom in those days. Then they put a big rock in front of the cave entrance, so no one else could get in. And finally, guards were ordered to stay in front of the cave. Two full days and nights passed. And then on the third morning... You hear something? Yeah, what is that? Hey, what's going on around here? Huh? How is that stone moving all by itself? Look! Just then, some of Jesus' friends were on their way to visit the cave. We have everything we need, right? Perfume? Spices? I think so. Now we just need to talk to the guards. I hope they don't try to stop us. <gasps> Out of my way! <laughs> I wonder why they're running. <gasps> Do not be surprised. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. He's alive again. Go and tell all of his friends the good news. Jesus lives! <gasps> we must go tell everyone. What good news! John, angels, it's unbelievable. He's alive. Jesus is alive again. An angel appeared before me and told me the good news. I can't believe it. What a miracle. Incredible. Risen from the dead. Praise God. I must see for myself.
Thomas, it's so good to see you. I have some great news. Jesus is risen. He is alive again. Mm-hmm. I know that you've been sad lately, Mary. Once you get some rest... No, really. Everything I say is true. Uh, thanks for the news, Mary. That's really great. Why don't you go on home now? Believe me, it's true. Oh, Thomas, I'll see you later. I'd have to see Jesus with my own two eyes to believe it. Wouldn't it be great, though, to walk into this house and see my teacher's familiar face again? I can almost picture it now. Jesus would be standing here, smiling at me. Ooh. Jesus? Jesus! It, is that you? Now that Jesus is gone, we might as well fish. Are you ready with the net? Uh-huh. Come on, John. Okay. And a one, a two, a three! All right. Let's pull her back in. Pull! 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 Oh, no. Not again. We haven't caught so much as a minnow. Let's try it again, I guess. A one, a two, a... Look! Who's that over there? Throw your net on the other side of your boat. What is that going to prove? Besides, we've already tried that. We already tried that! Try again! Why should there be fish on one side of the boat and not the other? Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Come on. And a one, a two, a three! Whoa! Whoa! Pull! Pull! Look at all these fish! Just look at them! But how can that be? How did he know that? Who is that man? Some kind of miracle. A, A miracle? miracle? Jesus? It is! I can't believe it! It's him! Jesus! Jesus. Quick, everybody, pull in the nets. Pull in the nets and let's get rowing. You're back. I can't believe you're back. Yes, Peter, but only for a little while. You see, I have to go back to my father in heaven soon. Are you leaving us again? You just got back. We want you to stay. Don't be sad. You should all be happy. Rejoice. Happy? How can we be happy when you're going to leave us again? Because I died to make up for all the wrong things people have ever done. You mean you died for us? But why? Because I love you all. What do you want us to do? God wants you to be with him in everything you do. And the way to do that is to love everyone the way I love you. I'm going to make a place in heaven for you. Tell everyone you meet about me and about what I have taught you. And always remember, I will be with you forever. We'll never forget you. We will tell everyone about your love. And the disciples never did forget. They went through villages and cities in many parts of the world, telling people about Jesus and the great things he had done. Many years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very mean king. Egyptian kings were called pharaohs.
faster, better, more. The Pharaoh made all of the people of Israel living in Egypt work as slaves. They had to build the buildings and lift many heavy things. They had no time to rest and little to eat. They were not free and they were very unhappy. But the worst thing of all was, one day the Pharaoh decided that the firstborn sons of the Israelites would be killed. Oh no! They won't get my baby. I'll find some way to save him. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, decided to float her baby down the river. Shh, don't be afraid. I won't let the Pharaoh hurt you. Your sister Miriam will be right here to make sure you're safe. What's that? A baby! Oh, this poor baby needs a home. I'll take him to the palace and take care of him there. Excuse me, Princess. If you need a nurse for the baby, I know a good one who lives nearby. Her name is Jochebed. Thank you. Bring her to the palace. They named the baby Moses, and he was raised in the Pharaoh's palace as an Egyptian. But Jochebed was near Moses while he was a child to teach him right from wrong. Ha! <laughs> Moses, time for your lessons. Now, did you do your homework? Sure I did. When I went out this morning, I saw a slave master hitting one of the Israelites. He was wrong, Moses. All people should be treated with respect. And Jochebed taught him that the Israelites in Egypt were unhappy because they were not free. Many years later, when Moses grew up to be a strong young man, he came upon some Egyptians who were treating people very poorly. You're lazy. Get up, get up and get back to work right now or else. Leave him alone. You shouldn't treat anyone like that. He deserves it. He's pretending he's hungry and tired because he's too lazy to work. I'm teaching him a lesson about... Leave him alone. It was very unusual for someone to help an Israelite like that. Everyone told each other what happened. Moses was sure he had done the right thing. But he knew the Pharaoh would be very angry. So Moses left Egypt all by himself, knowing that he was really an Israelite. He wanted to go to another land where he would not have to see his people be treated so badly. After traveling for 40 days, Moses found himself in the land of Midian. In Midian, Moses got married and had a family. He lived in Midian for so long that he almost forgot about Egypt and about the poor Israelites. Until one day, Moses was looking after a flock of sheep up in the hills, and it was there that he saw an amazing sight. Come here, little guy. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> now I've got you. Huh? Moses, come closer. Who's there? God. The Israelites in Egypt are unhappy because they are not free. 
Go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Why have you chosen me? Don't be afraid. I will be with you. But will they believe me? I will give you signs to show the people that I am with you. Throw your staff on the ground. Now reach down and pick it up by the tail. Trust me, the people will believe you. Now go. And so Moses returned to Egypt to do what God said. Are you Moses? I have heard about you. What are you doing back here after all these years? I am here because God sent me. He wants you to free the people of Israel. Oh, he does, does he? Too bad for him. Who is this God, anyway? I've never heard of him. Have you? No, sir, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Well then, this God of yours must not exist, right? Yes, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Right. You there, come here. We're too nice to the Israelites. After all, they have a big, strong god on their side. Tell my slave masters not to give them any more straw for the bricks they make. From now on, they have to find their own straw. Yes, your most royal wonderful. I said go! Ha! Don't try and tell me what to do. I'm the pharaoh. It's time for your bath, Your Royal Highness. Uh. I won't give up that easily. And so Moses returned. God wants you to let the Israelites go free. Oh, haven't we already done this? It'll take a miracle before I listen to another word you're saying. See the power of God, the only true and living God. Oh. Silence! Nothing but foolish tricks. Besides, watch this. Think twice before you try to trick me again. I am not trying to trick you. I am warning you. God can perform many miracles. <laughs> that proves nothing. Get out of my sight. I'll be back. And the next morning, Moses did come back. Pharaoh, let the Israelites go free. If you do not, God will let plagues happen to Egypt. The plagues will bring very bad things. No! See for yourself the power of God. It is blood. Just another magic trick. Ugh. Go away! You? Again? What do you want now? Let my people go. If you don't, God will let frogs come all over the land. Frogs will sleep in your bed and eat your food and... Frogs? I love frogs. Why, when I was a little boy... Uh, never mind about that right now. Who cares about a few frogs? Get out of here!
Find Moses and bring him to me. Now. You, make the frogs go away. Do you promise to let the Israelites go free? Yes, yes, just get rid of these pesky things. God made the frogs go away, but the Pharaoh didn't keep his promise. He did not free the people of Israel. So God allowed more plagues to happen in Egypt. God let lots and lots of gnats come to Egypt. They flew everywhere. Flies flew everywhere. But the Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go, so the animals got very sick. And then boils grew on the skins of the Egyptians. And terrible hail fell down from the skies. And the locusts came. And ate their clothes. Next, everything was as dark as night for three whole days. Each time a plague happened to Egypt, the Pharaoh promised to let the people of Israel go free. But each time he changed his mind and broke his promise. Now will you let the people of Israel leave? No, I will not. I've tried to warn you, but you won't listen. Please hear me now, or you'll be very sorry. The last plague will be the worst. The firstborn sons of the Egyptians will die. What has your God done? He has taken my son from me. Leave Egypt at once and take your people with you. Moses told the Israelites to get ready to leave Egypt right away. He knew the Pharaoh might change his mind again, so they packed and left as fast as they could. I can't believe we're actually going. It's just as Moses promised. A land where we could be free. It seems like a dream. But it's not a dream. At last, we're on our way home. Single file for a while, then scatter to and fro. Trusting Moses knows his way. Singing as we go Mighty Moses and the Israelites Thousands of sandals in the sand Mighty Moses, what an amazing sight Leading us on to the promised land The day has gone to journey on To a brand new
And so, finally, the people of Israel left Egypt on the way to their homeland, the land of freedom. By day, a pillar of smoke guided them. And by night, a pillar of fire showed them the way. But back at the palace, the pharaoh had changed his mind again. I was a fool to let them go. Who will build our pyramids and grow our food and, and fan me when it is warm? We must get the Israelites back. Call my chariot. In the meantime, the Israelites had reached the Red Sea. Moses, look behind us! The Pharaoh's army! They'll be here soon! Oh no! Moses, what have you done to us? We would have been better off living unhappily in Egypt rather than dying here in the desert. Don't be afraid. God will protect us. Don't hurry, Moses. Rest tonight. Tomorrow morning, raise your hand and stretch out your staff over the sea. It will part, and you will be able to go through on dry land. Till morning, then we'll recapture them. And when morning came, Moses stood by the sea and waved his hand over the waters. And the sea parted, just as God had promised. Come on, follow me. Come again! What are we going to do? Just wait. Then the sea fell upon the Egyptian army and stopped them. Thank you, God, for saving us. The Israelites passed through the Sinai Desert on their way to the land of Israel. When they were hungry, God sent them food. Mother, look! What is it? It was sweet, tasty bread that God had sent to feed the people. The Israelites called it manna, which meant, what is it? Mm. When the Israelites were thirsty, God sent them water. milk instead. <laughs> 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 
When the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert, they set up camp near the foot of the mountain. It was time for God to give the people his laws. What is happening, Moses? What does God want? God is calling me. I am sure he has great plans for us. I must go ahead. And Moses climbed to the top of the mountain. I am ready for you. I have rules that I want to give the people of Israel. If they follow them, I will protect the people. Chisel out two stones and I will write them down. Always respect your father and mother. Do not kill anybody. Do not steal anything. God gave many other laws. He also told Moses how to build the home of worship where the Israelites would pray to God. God also told Moses that everybody should rest on the seventh day, just like he did when he created the world. Thank you, God. And this is how Moses led the people of Israel back to their homeland with the power of God and his sacred laws. These laws are called the Ten Commandments. Throughout the long journey, God helped Moses guide the Israelites home.